but let's do the effects of a tariff real quick. Suppose a small country with a perfectly competitive market is initially importing a product. Okay, so now we're starting with an importing country. or importing already. The government comes along and says, we're going to put a tax on imported goods, a tariff it's called. Right? Now we're going to use a specific tariff instead of an ad valorem tariff. Remember, we talked about taxes. You could set them as a percentage or you could set them as a dollar charge per unit. We'll do a specific import tariff. Okay, it's collected by U.S. Customs when they enter the country. And for a lot of people, they think, oh, well, it's no problem if we put a tax on imports from China because the Chinese are now going to have to pay more. I won't have to pay more because maybe I won't buy those goods from China or whatever, but it's going to be the foreigners that are paying the tax. Turns out that's not quite true. We'll see in a minute. Okay, so here's the effects of a tariff, small country case. Let the tariff be equal to T, dollars per pound. It's measured along the vertical axis here. And we're going to set that tariff T to be equal to, well, here's what's really basically going to happen. If you put a tax of, say, a dollar per pound on a pound of coffee, what's going to happen is that that tariff is actually going to raise up the domestic price by the full amount of the tariff. You've got to follow the terminology on the graph, okay? So this is going to be PW, the world price, also called the free trade price is what I'm listing here, plus T is going to be equal to P sub T, all right? So the tariff rate is given by this vertical distance right here, listed by the green arrow right there, all right? And what's going to happen if you start with a world price or free trade price of PW, and then you put a tariff in place, it's actually going to do nothing but raise up the domestic price by the full amount of the tariff. And part of that's going to be because of the small country effect. It's, it's not going to affect the world price at all. But this is the effect of putting the tariff into place. It raises the domestic price for everybody up to P sub T, the full amount of the tax that's applied at the border. Now, if the price rises to P sub T, suppliers are going to increase their supply from SFT here up to S sub T expand production, it's going to create jobs, all right? So the tariff is going to improve the well-being of that particular import competing industry. The higher price of the tariff, though, is also going to raise up the price to consumers, and they're going to cut back their demand. So as a result of the tariff, the price domestically rises by the full amount of the tariff, supply goes up, demand goes down, and imports fall from this distance here. EFT minus SFT to this smaller distance up here, ET minus ST. So put a tax into place, you're cutting back imports. And if you put a bigger tax into place, like up to here, you're going to be able to raise the price back up to the autarky level, eliminate trade completely with the country. That's called a prohibitive tariff. All right, what are the welfare effects of the tariff? Let's do it. If you put the tariff into place, here's what's going to happen. Consumer surplus originally was given by this area here. As a result of the tariff, consumer surplus is reduced to the smaller area. The effect is a minus A plus B plus C plus D. Consumers lose out because of the higher prices they have to pay now that the tariff is imposed. What happens to producers? Producers benefit. Original surplus was given by this area. New area is this surplus area. So it's going to be a positive A. Producers are getting increased profitability. We measure that. Jobs are being created in the background. That looks good. There's a creation, job creation process going on. It's going to be recognized. And what's the change in government revenue? Now, the government is collecting a tax at the border. That's money that's being collected and going into the government budget. The size of that government revenue effect or tariff revenue is going to be the tariff rate itself times the amount of imports into the country. Now, imports are given by DFT minus SFT, this distance right here. The tariff is given by this distance right here. So area C is multiply the height by the base, and we're going to get the area C, which is actually corresponds to the tariff revenue. It's being collected by the government. Now, what do they do with that tariff revenue? Well, they spend it on some sort of good government programs, let's assume, and we're going to measure that as a benefit that's accruing to the economy. All right, so producers are better off, we know that. Government's better off, we know that. But consumers lose. Now, what's the net effect? We can use our model to 
to distinguish the magnitudes of these effects and see what the net effect is. The A's are going to cancel on the first two lines, minus A and plus A. Minus C, got to carry that minus into the parentheses, remember. So minus C and plus C on the third line are going to cancel. And we're going to be left with minus B minus D. These little triangular areas, B and D. Now, we give names to those, actually, and we call B a, it's going to be called a production efficiency loss because it's a little triangle that lists, sits next to the supply curve. D is a consu consumer or consumption efficiency loss because it's a little triangle next to the demand curve. But are also known as deadweight losses in general because of the tariff that's being put into place. So B and D are the deadweight losses to the economy. Okay, what's the effect of the tariff? Consumers lose? Yes. Import competing producers benefit? Yes. Taxpayers benefit? Yes. But the national or market welfare in this particular product has got to go down. Overall, economic efficiency falls, and that's like saying there's just fewer happiness bursts going around in the country overall. The losses exceed the benefits. So in order to, to put this, when you put this policy in place, as Trump did by putting tariffs against China, what it's going to do is redistribute money. It's taking money away from consumers. And it's putting money into the pockets of the producers and into the, into the workers who are getting jobs in that particular industry. So some people are benefiting, others are losing, and the government's collecting some money along the way. So if you just focus on the benefits, it kind of looks like a good deal. If you add in the losses that are accruing to consumers, not such a good deal overall. This is the argument that economists will make to suggest that protection of trade, keeping trade from happening, even keeping imports down, is not such a good thing for the country overall. Right, and that's what this summarizes. Now, I want to talk about one other thing, and this is going to lead into some other discussions we're going to have in a few weeks or so, about how information is used to try to promote certain types of policies. And here I want to focus your attention on something. The benefits from the tariffs in this particular case are going to be very visible. Put the tariff into place, and you're going to have in yellow here. Hundreds of import competing firms are going to know that their market is in a better position. They've got better production. They've got more people working for them. Their industry is going to benefit. And hundreds of import competing firms are going to know that that's coming about because of the tariff. Okay, thousands of workers in the same industries are going to know that their jobs are being secured and maybe created because of the import tariffs that are taking place. The government is going to notice the increased tariff revenues that they're bringing in. All of that is very, very visible. The one thing that is kind of invisible, and this is something that most people don't really even recognize or know, is that the tariffs are raising the prices of the products that consumers are purchasing. You see that in the model here, right? Prices for consumers are going to go up. And in fact, I forgot to mention this. I should have highlighted this. What this tells us also is that that tariff that's being charged and money going to the government here, this area C, and the benefits to the producers, area A. Where is that money coming from? It's coming from the consumers. Okay, the consumers domestically are paying higher prices because of the tariff. And it's that increase that's actually causing the increased price that's actually generating this benefit to the producers and to the government overall. So it's not the foreigners who are paying this tax. It's actually the domestic citizens themselves who are paying the tariff. Back to this. Benefits are, are, are clearly visible. Losses, though, the higher prices, the Walmart effect, your toasters at Walmart, your microwaves, your furniture, your clothing, all of that in time is going to cost just a little bit more because of the tariffs that are being put into place. Now, it's not going to cost a lot more. A toaster might go up in price from you know, from $25 to $28, okay? But you go in, how often do you buy a toaster? Not very often. You go in to buy a toaster, it's $28 instead of $25. You don't know that it's $3 more because of the tariff. You don't know that you're paying a little bit more for that toaster, for that microwave, for that furniture, when those price increases come down the line over the course of the next few months. You just, there's always normal differences in prices, different products. You can't see increased prices that are coming about. 
those increased prices are there and they're affecting hundreds of millions of consumers of these products. Remember, Walmart is huge. They sell enormous amounts of goods every month. And if all of the products in Walmart go up by just a dollar, the increased revenues to Walmart are going to skyrocket, but the losses to consumers are going to be significant. All right now, I want to bring you back to something we talked about earlier in the semester. Remember the Trojan story we told earlier in the class? I put that out there because I want to make a comparison with something like tariff. Notice that the effects of the tariff is kind of similar to the effects of the Trojan program. The Trojan program, remember, you have a computer programmer, writes a program, a Trojan, that goes out and it takes a little bit of money out of everybody's account in their bank. So little that it's not even noticed by the individual bank um, depositors, okay? Um, they don't even notice, but it goes into their pockets and they become fabulously wealthy because it took just a little bit of money away from lots and lots of different people. Okay? Well, the tariff is kind of like that because what the tariff is doing is it's putting money into the pockets of the import competing firms, and that's very noticeable. But the losses, the people that are paying for it, don't even recognize or notice that they're paying for it. Okay, so this is ingenious. This is fantastic because you can get a lot of money transferred to you if you can get a tariff into place and the people who are paying you that extra money don't even know that they're doing it. Okay, just like the Trojan program. Now, a firm cannot legally hire somebody to write a computer program to transfer a small amount of money from everybody's bank account into their pocket. Okay, it's completely illegal. You cannot do that. But you can, as a firm or an industry, you can hire a lobbying firm to talk your legislators into raising a tariff on your imported goods that you're competing with, and you can do that legally. You can transfer a lot of money into your pocket with this government policy by convincing the government that the tariff is a good thing. How are you going to do that? make lobbying effective, you need to convince legislators and people that the tariff is good for the country. You can't say, just do this because it's good for us. You want to tell people that it's good for the country. So how are you going to do that? You're going to emphasize the business success with the tariffs. Tariffs bring jobs. Tariffs bring jobs to workers. You're going to emphasize unfair practices abroad and say, oh, look at the terrible conditions abroad and the cheap labor and all of this. You're going to say, we need to cut back and choke off competition. And you're going to minimize the cost to consumers if it even ever comes up. And most of the time it won't. The majority of people can be convinced the action is good for the country, even though the economic arguments tilt against it. Okay? And one last point. I didn't mention this, but I have to mention this. One of the things that the tariff does is it actually reduces competition with firms abroad. So what this firm can do by getting a legislators to put a tariff into place is reduce their competition with other companies abroad. That increases their monopoly power. So what firms can do with this policy is actually get a little bit more monopoly power, which increases their profitability, and it's all coming off the backs of what are likely to be the poorest consumers out there, the lowest income households. End of story. I have a video here at the end, and I'll have you watch it if you want. It's just showing our Secretary of Commerce, Wilbur Ross, talk about how very small the increase in price will be on a can of soup when we put aluminum tariffs and steel tariffs into place back a couple of years ago. And he's making the point, the cost to consumers is so little, we just shouldn't even worry about it. But what our economics suggests is that it's those small costs added up across millions of people is actually what's making the cost of the tariff greater the benefits that accrue from it.